So we're going to do a look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, and today and then the next two Sundays we're going to focus on living for Thanksgiving, living for uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving, of course, has a long history in our church. Uh, it was made an official federal holiday in 1863, but it has been celebrated off and on in different ways. Uh, throughout uh, uh, this land since 1621, but setting aside times for Thanksgiving has been a part of the Christian tradition and the Jewish tradition for a long time, and uh, thanks is very important. I know when I, I think about Thanksgiving, a lot of times uh, it's all centered around me. I remember as a kid thinking about getting excited about Thanksgiving's coming up, and I thought about that delectable turkey that was going to be on the table, and I thought about that delicious ham that was going to be on the table, and I just couldn't help myself sometimes to go start picking at it and, and get my hand slapped uh, when Mama was getting things ready, and thinking about going to get together with family and my cousins and friends and go outside and play football and watch football and the pumpkin pie and whipped cream and all of that, but... So in so many ways, uh, Thanksgiving has become this thing where it's all centered around us. It's all about us. It's about our day off. It's about our, our time with our family, which are all good things. It's about the food that we're going to eat. And it's about the football games that we're going to watch, or even the basketball games I think are coming on now on Thanksgiving Day. And there's so many things that are there to distract us and uh, detract from what really is supposed to be going on. Uh, when I'm talking about living for Thanksgiving, I'm not talking about living for things like that and those kind of moments in life. I'm talking about living from a place of an attitude of gratitude for all that God has done for us and everything that we have. And we need to be reminded from time to time that it's not all about us and it is about God and because we have a tendency to forget that. To have, we have a tendency to forget where everything really comes from and to not acknowledge that. In Deuteronomy 8, if you get to Deuteronomy 8, in the first part, he's reminding his people, God is, of all that he had brought them through. And he says there he had allowed them to go through this hardship for their good, for their ultimate blessing, but also to test them and to teach them how to trust him. To give you an idea of how important Deuteronomy 8 is, listen to this and see if it reminds you of anything. It says in verse 3, it says, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. If you're familiar with the Word of God, you'll recognize that that's a verse that Jesus quoted to the devil when he was being tempted in the wilderness. When he was being tempted in the wilderness, and the devil was tempting him to turn the stones into bread, to use his power to turn the stones into bread. And he, he, Jesus quoted, in resisting that temptation, this verse. Man does not live by bread alone. Because we have a tendency to begin to put our trust in the bread rather than in the one who supplies the bread. And not to take seriously the spiritual things of life. To put our trust in the material things of life. He also reminds them there that uh, he is like a loving parent. God is like a loving parent taking them through and allowing them to go through hardship to train them as a, a father would train his child in how to live. And then he reminds them of the greater temptations that are to come. There will be greater temptations for them in the future. And listen to this in verse 7. I'm going to pick up in verse 7. He says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and of barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. You shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. 
Verse 11 here, very important. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments and His rules and His statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up. And you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the, fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may confirm His covenant that He swore to your fathers as it is to this day. And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you this day that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God, this morning. Thanks be to God. So here God is reminding Israel, His people, and He reminds us as well in this text today that we have to beware and take care that we don't forget about Him. That we don't forget about Him. You know, we, we sing the song, God Bless America, and we often have prayers and asking for God to bless America. And we have politicians that will go through their spiel and at the end, almost inevitably, they will end with, and God bless the United States of America. But what we don't hear too much of nowadays is the call from our leaders and even in our churches a lot of times and the reminder that we not only need to pray for God to bless America, we need to start praying that America, once again, will begin to bless God. That we'll begin to bless and to honor the name of God. In the past, if you were to go back and listen to or read some of the Thanksgiving proclamations from like George Washington and some of our other presidents and Abraham Lincoln, not only would they talk about and pray about God blessing America, they would remind America and the people of America that they needed to bless God. As Deuteronomy 8, 11 or 8, 10 here reminds us that we need to, to take care lest we forget where everything, everything really comes from. Paul says to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, he, he asked the Corinthians, what do you have, because they're getting a little arrogant, they're getting a little prideful, and he says to them, what do you have that you have not received as a gift? And when you can think, well, I've got all kinds of stuff. You should have seen the big screen television i got. You know how hard I worked for that big screen television? I earned that television. And all the time you're forgetting who gave you the strength, the ability, the agility, the mental capacity to do the work to earn that television. It all really can be traced back to God. Every heartbeat, every single breath. We have this tendency to forget the source of all that is. The source of all that we have. And we need to be reminded from time to time. To remind ourselves. Because we can fall very quickly into this passivity of just kind of passively forgetting God. We don't want to forget God. That's how, do you ever have to parents to remind your kids to just say those two words? Say someone gives them a piece of candy and they, they want to grab that candy and just run off sometimes, right? And you have to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You should. What do you say? Just two words. Thank you. Thank you. Remember to have an attitude of gratitude. Do not take things for granted. And forgetting can be a passive thing at first where we kind of just passively get into the habit of forgetting God. 
and not be mindful of God. But eventually, if we let it go on long enough, we'll go from just passively forgetting God to actively saying, forget you, God. Forget you, God. Shaking our fists at God saying, we don't need you. And we don't even want you anymore. We've got to be careful. He says in verse 17, Beware lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. We can be tempted to think it all comes from us. Now, I'm not just talking individually here. Not, don't just think about this individually. Think about this collectively. We as a, a church, we as a nation, we as a collective people, also individually, but collectively. So Veterans Day, for example, we can, we can easily slip into saying things if we're not careful. And we can end up, instead of be, giving thanks for our veterans, we can end up thanking our veterans and thanking the might of our military for the freedoms and the blessings that we enjoy. You see what I'm saying here? Now when Paul writes his letters, and a lot of the letters to Paul, Philippians, different letters, he gives thanks for the people and what they have done, but he gives the thanks to God. Right? We've got to be careful. Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Do not put your trust in chariots and horses, representing the might and the power of their armies. Do not put your trust in chariots or horses, but put your trust in, guess who? God. A big difference. We can thank God for the chariots and for the horses, for the army, for the might, but not to think that we uh, are living in the land of the free because of, you finish the sentence for me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because of the... What? See how easy it is? How easy it is to forget God. We need to be reminded not to forget where all of these things come from. I'm not saying don't thank a veteran, but thank the veteran for God's sake, not for his own sake. Don't thank the might and the power of our own army, the might and the power of our own leadership. We need to remember where it all comes from. It's not by our strength, it's not by our might, but it's by the Spirit of the living God, as Zechariah 4 says. So we need to be reminded to not forget and to beware, to begin to trust in ourselves. And this is about humility here. This is about humility. Uh, the, the coach of the Saint, uh, Saint, uh, New Orleans Saints, Sean Payton, he's got this uh, th tradition of talking to his players about not taking the cheese. And uh, have you already heard this? He reminds his players constantly. Sometimes he'll do these little clever things where he'll leave cheese in their lockers. Or he'll leave a little cheese laying out on the floor in the locker room just to remind them to not take the cheese. And what he's getting at is he doesn't want them to, have, to hear all the accolades and hear all the praise and all the pats on the back and all of the, the flattery that, that they might receive from the media or from other people or whoever else, their family, he doesn't want them to take the cheese like a mouse would take the cheese off of the trap. He's reminding them that in receiving all of that praise and adulation for themselves, there might be a trap in it. Because they can begin to think too highly of themselves. He is a football coach who values humility. Values humility. Now you want to be confident, but also have confidence with humility. To remind them, because you can become, you think about some of these things that these amazing athletes can do today. These football players, some of the, I mean, I'm just amazed by the catches that they're making today. Uh, the ways that they're doing these one-handed catches and, and coming down on a dime right on the sidelines and all of these amazing things that they're doing. They're incredible athletes and they can get all of this accolades and all of this praise and they can, it can begin to go to their head or the celebrities among them and they think that now that they're so good at this that they're God's gift to everything and everyone and they can speak about anything and everything and they know about everything, what we should do about anything. 
in the country. They lose their humility and they overestimate their own abilities and their own capacities. And so Sean Payton will also, apparently he takes them out on an airboat, one of these swamp boats, uh, when they start to, you know, to help them to remind them about humility because they can get so full of confidence in one area and that can uh, fool them into thinking that they're God's gift to everything. So he takes them out on an airboat and he gives them a bow and arrow and he tells them as they're going through the, the lake or the pond or whatever, they're, wherever they're at, to, to go fishing with a bow and arrow. And they're out there trying to go fit to fish with a bow and arrow. Now talk about a frustrating day. Talk about a day where you're not going to have a lot of success. And it's for them a reminder to be humble. To not think too highly of themselves. To not trust in their own power and their own strength. But to remember where it all comes from. We need to remember where it all comes from. So we can go from this passive forgetting. We're kind of, we put God as the last thing on our priority list. And the first thing uh, to go off of our list is the, the heat's really on. And we begin to forget how important it is to acknowledge and to worship God. We can go from this passive forgetting about God to this active forget you God pretty quick. Let me give you an example. There's so many different ways where this country in which we live has gone from just forgetting about God to shaking our fist and saying forget you God. When uh, I was uh, in the hospital with Christy after Anna was born, uh, as you, uh, many of you remember the story, Anna was born, she was still born, she didn't have a heart rate beat, she didn't have a breath, uh, she had no uh, oxygen and no blood flow for over 10 minutes, she was dead. And my wife and I prayed in that moment, and she was revived. And the doctor who delivered her said, I'm not sure what has happened here, but you shouldn't expect her to make it. And then a couple days later, it looks like, well, she's going to make it, but she's going to be severely disabled, so you need to be prepared. Well, obviously, Anna's are out of here. She's fine. It was a miracle. Absolute miracle. And it was a miracle that God did for us, not because we deserved it or we did something to earn it, and it was certainly not because we were so good. It's because God is so good. Amen? It was God showing us His grace and His mercy. We didn't deserve that. We didn't earn that. And I can't guarantee that for anybody else ever again. But God graciously showed up. He chose to for whatever reason. And it was beginning to teach us because we had come to the place where we were just trusting in ourselves and the power of our own faith and the power of our own goodness. That's, what we're, that's where we were in our lives. And that taught us in no uncertain terms about God's grace and his mercy and his love. But what you may not know about that is after that, we got out of the NICU about two weeks later. And uh, we were in, we were about a few days out of the NICU and had just done an interview with WXI Channel 12, Kimberly Vance Cole. And uh, they had, it was such a major thing that had happened that they wanted to do this interview with us. So in the interview, I had shared with Kimberly Vance Coy the, the God, you know, how God showed up, and, you know, about faith and, and what, you know, was going on spiritually, okay? And I talked a lot about that. But we were back in the hospital with Anna because she got RSV, not related to any of the things in the, that had happened in her birth. She had RSV, was having trouble breathing, so just as a precaution, we went back to Baptist Hospital. And the doctor who looked at her medical records, he looked at her medical records, and he, he started to scan down, and he, all of a sudden you saw his head do this. Like, whoa! Wow! And he started like, what in the world? He was trying to get us to explain to him how this could be. This is impossible. And not just a few minutes after that, that news clip came on. That news clip came on just a few minutes after that moment. And in the news clip, they surgically removed everything I said about God and about miracles and about faith. And they called it a medical miracle. You see how easily we can forget about God? And not only forget, but intentionally say, forget you, God. It happens more 
and more. There's a coach, a high school football coach in Washington State whose case may go to the Supreme Court at some point, but the Ninth Circuit has denied his case and turned him down for his appeal, but he was simply fired from his job as a football coach for going onto the field after their games, not requiring any players to go with him, just simply going of his own volition and by himself and simply kneeling down in the middle of the football field to do this and pray. And for that, he was fired. He was fired. Now you take an NFL player with a national anthem playing and they kneel on the field and they receive nothing but what? Praise. Praise and support. And I do, I do, I stand for their right to kneel during the national anthem. I don't agree with it, I don't think it's right, but I stand for their right to kneel. But by jolly, we all need to stand for the right of people like Coach Kennedy to kneel in prayer as well. After all, this is still the United States of America, is it not? We have this thing called the First Amendment, the freedom of religion, and this first for a reason. We need to stand for their right not only to kneel in protest, but stand for the right of people to kneel in prayer. It doesn't have to be an either or. It should be a both and. It doesn't have to be the way that's being construed to be. It's so easy to forget about God. And it's so easy to get to the place where we end up shaking our fist and saying, forget you, God in refusing to acknowledge who God is and all that He has done for us. And He's done more for us than just to give us a few blessings in this life that we enjoy, tremendous blessings that we in this life enjoy. Everything that we have is a gift from Him. And we take so much for granted. I mean, I, we go into a grocery store, we don't think anything of it. I, I just always reminded every time I go to a grocery store, I don't go shopping much, but when I do go, I'm reminded of this this little uh, fellow who became a Christian in the middle of the jungle in South America, true story, middle of the jungle, South America, became a Christian through missionaries, who many of whom were killed initially, who gave their lives for these people to share the gospel. He became a Christian, and he was invited to America, and he was given a tour of America, and he was just taken into a grocery store. And he, just, he was just like, he couldn't believe it. And he you should have listened to the way he described it. He's like, and you just get this little this little thing and you push it around and you just pull food off of it and fill this thing up and then you go to the checkout and you just hand the lady this little piece of plastic and she lets you leave with the food. It's amazing. Wow. So much that we take for granted. So many blessings that we have, but not only those kind of blessings. The blessing of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ and what God has done for us is a gracious gift by His blood that we receive forgiveness of sins. By His power we receive new life. New life as those who were risen from the dead to live a new life, a godly life for Him. So when I'm talking about living for thanksgiving, I'm not talking about living for the next good meal we're going to eat. I'm talking about living for Jesus Christ. With an attitude of gratitude and offering thanks and praise. And not being afraid to say it from the mountaintops. And from the house, housetops and the rooftops. Not just in our prayer closets, not just in our churches, but to share it with the world. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about living for thanksgiving. To give praise and honor to the one who really deserves it. That's what it's all about. And it's so important. It's right at the very heart of our faith. And it's right at the very heart and the root. It's right at the very root of the problem that we have, this problem of sin. Let me read this to you from Romans chapter 1. Here Paul is talking about the fall of humanity into sin. And he says, For although they knew God, so the problem is we don't really have enough knowledge to know about God, it's that we know God, but we suppress the knowledge we have about us. That's the problem. 
For they, although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. That's right at the very root of the problem of sin. And the, it's right at the very heart of the matter of living a life of thanksgiving for what Jesus Christ, what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, that we can have eternal life in the new heaven and the new earth. Will you pray with me today? Father, we give you praise today. But we're also mindful of all the many different ways that we do forget about you. And the ways that we allow other things to crowd you out. And uh, we confess that sometimes we treat you as an afterthought, as a backup plan. But Lord, forgive us today where we fall short. We thank you for the forgiveness we have through faith in Christ and through his shed blood. May all of these under the sound of my voice today know that forgiveness through Jesus Christ, through faith and trust in him. May we all give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Not only in this place today, but in every place, wherever we go, that we can honor and glorify your name and sing and shout your praises. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.